I actually don't have anything to report tonight, so I'm going to turn it over to Bruce for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Marlene. We are going to begin with all of our recognitions, and then I will follow up with the specific pieces of the superintendent's report that I would like to share with the community. So I'm at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Tercio. Thank you, Mr. Prater. Uh, so we're going to start off right in kindergarten, uh, recognizing our Red Raiders of the Month. Uh, we have Skylar Lucier, uh, Mrs. Heck, and Mrs. Salvador's class. During the month of November, we covered our, our recovered perspective, bravery, and gratitude in our positivity project lessons. Skylar does an excellent job displaying these traits as she has worked in kindergarten, being brave when dealing with transitions and changes at school. Skylar has kept a positive attitude. Skylar shows a sense of perspective and caring about others in the classroom by always being respectful to her peers. Skylar often shares her gratitude for, uh, for help from her teachers with thoughtful manners and a kind word or virtual hug. We are so proud of Skylar. Nice job, Skylar. In first grade, we have Brantley Fisher from Mrs. Ferrone and Mrs. Paulsonella's class. Brantley shows kindness, compassion, patience, and thoughtfulness each day. He is always thinking of others. Every morning, he will ask, how are you, Mrs. Ferrone? In breakout rooms, he is an active listener and always gives compliments and positive feedback to his peers. Brantley gives 100% each and every day. He is such a positive force in our class family. We are so lucky to have Brantley in our learning community. And just so you all know, Brantley is a virtual learner and he's been crushing it. In second grade, in Mr. Marco, Mrs. DeMarco and Mrs. Rocco's class, Logan DeMets. Logan exemplifies all of our December P2 traits on a daily basis. Logan is very aware that words and actions affect others. As a result, he chooses to always act with kindness. Logan chooses to see the positive side of what sometimes might not be a great situation and chooses to see the good in others, even when they might not see it themselves. He often gives genuinely thoughtful compliments to his classmates for their accomplishments and efforts. Logan is often one of the first students to reach out and offer to help another student or the adults around him. Logan's increased self-confidence has also increased his self-control. He has worked hard at staying calm and trusting in his own strengths and abilities. We are so proud of his accomplishments. Nice job, Logan. In third grade, we have uh, from Mrs. Richardson's and Mr. Sheehan's class, Dylan Salvador. Um, the December character traits for the Positivity Project consisted of kindness, self-control, and understanding how words and actions affect others. Dylan is an outstanding student who exhibits each of these character traits. Dylan is a kind-hearted person who has shown both simple acts of kindness, such as picking up a classmate's pencil, and significant acts of kindness, of kindness, such as coaching another student through a difficult question or assignment. Dylan shows self-control on a daily basis. His manners and actions in the building and classroom are respectful at all times. When walking in the hallway, he is quiet and respectful of other classes that are working. He raises his hand, waits patiently to be called upon, and his voice level is always appropriate. Dylan understands that learning is important, but Coop also knows when to have fun. Dylan understands how his words and actions can affect others. He is quick to help others who need assistance and is always encouraging with helping a fellow classmate. Dylan represents everything the P2 project stands for, including each of these December character traits. Dylan is a well-deserving December Red Raider of the Month. Congratulations, Dylan. Fourth grade, Mrs. Glass had Antonio Toledo. Throughout the many challenges this year, Antonio has shown many P2 traits. He has shown that whether we are in person or learning remote, he has been a leader and his leadership and participation has helped keep his teacher sane. <laughs> Our class would definitely be lost without him. In November, we covered perspective, bravery, gratitude, in our positivity project lessons. There's no doubt that Antonio succeeded in showing that he has worked very hard on all these P2 traits. I'm very grateful that Antonio is part of my class this year, and I look forward to watching him rock all the other P2 traits. Nice job, Antonio. Congrats. And lastly, in fifth grade, in Mrs. Clay's and Mrs. Young's class, uh, Madison Thompson. In the month of December, the positivity project traits we covered were OPM, Other People Matter, teamwork, and self-control. Madison displays these traits every day in our classroom. She models her OPM mindset when she volunteers to help fellow classmates and always has a kind word to share. She is great when working with others, looking to find the best solutions to the tasks given. These reasons plus many more are the reason Madison was our Red Raider of the Month. Congrats, Madison. Uh, this We're going to go on to our going above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, we are recognizing our aides in the elementary building. We're going to start with uh, Miss Cheryl, Melissa Cheryl. Uh, she's definitely gone above and beyond this year. Uh, we've had to use her in a variety of settings, uh, grade levels, and responsibilities all year. Each time there's a change, uh, Melissa takes it head on, does an amazing job, and doesn't 
have any issue with what we're asking her to do. So thank you so much for your flexibility throughout the year, Melissa. It's definitely been valued and appreciated. Uh, we have Patty Seferello. Seferello. Uh, Sef has done an amazing job with her shared aid position this year. Um, her demeanor, she's a constant team player and is always willing to do what is best for the kids. Uh, she's shown flexibility and understanding throughout the year and has been in, an invaluable member of the classroom. She has the patience of a saint. Thank you for all of your hard work and dedication every day, Seth. Amanda Mulheron has gone above and beyond this year. She has been an extremely important piece of the classroom routine and function. Her dedication and commitment to her students and to helping our school community is simply amazing. Recently, she actually agreed to be a part of our special education advisory committee to ensure that there's a voice for our aides in our work. She's a rock star. Thank you so much for everything you do, Amanda. Uh, Eric Bryan has gone way above and beyond this year advocating for his student. He uh, has thoroughly communicated the positive gains of his student along with the challenges that the student faces each week. Um, when he is available, Eric will support our building in any way he is asked. He has covered lunches, manned the hallways, um, etc. He definitely advocates for a child, knows his student thoroughly, and knows what makes that kiddo tick. So thank you, Eric, for having such an amazing relationship with your kiddo. He, uh, he wouldn't be who he is without your support. Austin Bryant, the brother, Austin Bryant has also gone above and beyond this year while working with fourth and fifth grade students. His primary role is a shared aid for students in the fifth grade class. However, he goes out of his way every morning. I see him every morning uh, forming relationships with kids during arrival and dismissal. Uh, right now, currently, I'm not going to read that. That's not even important, right? He's helping out in the cafeteria right now. We have over 25 kids in there, and he's bouncing around from every kid, whoever needs help. Um, it's amazing to see and watch. I can't thank Austin enough for the work he's doing in there. I should have just done this like as is instead of reading stuff. I think it would have been better. Uh, Aaron Malaznik, thank you so much for going above and beyond. Uh, working really closely with the students in your class, you have an amazing support um, and rapport with them that you use each day. You've shown flexibility and understanding when you're ever asked to cover another position or a task during the day. And regardless of where you go, you're doing an amazing job. So thank you so much for everything so far this year. Uh, I'm really grateful to have you in the building. Uh, we have Carrie Finelli. Carrie's gone above and beyond this year. Her work in the self-contained class is invaluable. Uh, the relationship she has with her students allows her to anticipate their needs and support them throughout the day. Um, her work at this arrival and dismissal is definitely noticed and appreciated. So thank you so much, Carrie, for everything that you're doing for us. And Gloria Herring has gone above and beyond this year. She's had an, it's another person that's had multiple assignments and has taken each assignment and done an amazing job. No matter where we have Gloria go, whether it's in the self-contained room or in the general education classroom, she's taking the bull by the horns and she's making sure she's doing an amazing job with them. I can't thank her enough for her flexibility and always putting maximum effort regardless of the task that is given to her. Patty Wickham. Patty has been the ultimate like utility player for us this year. I know uh, Mike has used her a bit. I've used her all over the place in the in the building, um, helping out in kindergarten, down at the high school, covering lunches, uh, taking temperatures, delivering papers, pretty much anything we say. Patty's like, I'll do it. I got you. Um, never complains. Always does everything that we need her to do. Uh, has been an amazing support for teachers and students. Thank you so much, Patty, for everything you do each day for our building and for our kids. Uh, Cara D. Virgilio. I think she got she lucked out without having a picture on here. I think she wanted on there. So there you go. It's not on there. Uh, but thank you so much for everything you've done this year. You've been very flexible as we've needed to use her in multiple classrooms and settings. Um, and has been rolling with whatever we've had, had her do. Uh, she's a learner at heart and has taken on helping uh, with iReady. Even though she's not feeling like she's very tech savvy, she's still crushing it. Uh, thank you for your work and willingness to help wherever and whenever you are needed. And lastly, Amy DeMarco. Amy DeMarco has gone above and beyond this year in her role as an office aide. Uh, extremely fixable, flexible and willing to take on a variety of roles. She's covering lunches, uh, in charge of handing out materials, watching the front door, answering phones, delivering papers all over the place in our building. And it help, everything she does helps our building function. Doing dismissal, like she's a pro at it. So thank you, Amy, for everything you've done for us this year. Uh, moving on to our culture. Uh, some of the key things I wanted to point out for the, for the board tonight um, and to any families that are watching, um, we have our P2 bulletin, bulletin boards up and around. We have um, our Red Raider of the Month. We're recognizing staff. We're doing a couple of spirit days uh, this month. Right now, we're doing a P2 book reading contest. Students are getting book baggies. They go home. They, they're logging. They're reading. The, cra the classes um, in every grade level, the top class in every grade level gets to help design a uh, spirit week for us. So like they'll pick crazy hair day or something like that. 
All right, um, so that's exciting that we're doing that now. Um, what else we have going on? Every day I've started doing, I don't know if you've seen them, but I do a recorded message, uh, morning announcements for everybody in the elementary school. Uh, it's the Pledge of Allegiance. It's our school flag, or our school pledge rather, excuse me. There's a fun fact from the kitchen, birthday announcements. Um, we talk about the teacher or admin led school wide events. I share some info about myself and the things that, you know, I'm going with every day. I talked a lot the last couple of weeks about a game I was playing on my Xbox. The kids thought that was hilarious. Um, and then naturally we have to end the meeting with some awful, bad, bad and terrible dad jokes. But what's been really cool is that kids and staff have been getting involved. And I have a list of like 20 jokes, all from kids that I'm going to try and get in tomorrow. So it's, it's been really fun. To, to read those and record those for the kids every day. So that's those are some of the things we're doing for culture uh, up at the elementary school. Um, I wanna go over really quickly our, our iReady performance. Um, this is what it looked like in the fall for our iReady diagnostic and reading. Um, we had around 50% of our students, um, one grade level or below, you know, and you can see the dark blue and the lighter blue are where we wanna be. Uh, this was the fall and if Mr. Potter, can you go to the next slide? I just wanna show you the jump that we've seen in ELA, we're down to 37% that are grade level below and our, our blue areas are getting much bigger. Uh, you can go right to the next one. I'll just go right to the numbers. Uh, you can see the two columns there, fall, where we were, winter, where we were, the changes are all green. We want to see a decrease in the number of kids that are one grade, two grades or three grades below. We've seen a decrease in each of those categories and kiddos that are on that grade level band, we've gone up 15.28%. What does that mean number wise? 103 of our students moved. And I gotta tell you, I get chills saying that. Our teachers, regardless of what they are facing right now, whether it's things virtually, things in person, the quarantines, the the lack of like the ability to like hug a kid when they're upset, like everything they're dealing with, they're still moving kids. I really wanted to make sure I give them my thanks and let them know how proud I am of, of being their principal and seeing what they are doing. This has nothing to do with me. This is all my teachers working their butts off every day and getting kids to move. Um, something I do want to point out, when you do iReady, it, it sets kids into a lesson path. And right around 50% of our learners are working on phonics and phonological awareness. So letters and letter names, sounds, how they blend together. And that's where a lot of our kids are right now um, in the percentage of the lessons right now. So I wanted just to point that out because that's the building blocks and that's something that we need to look at in the elementary school moving forward. All right. Uh, next slide, we'll go to math real quick. Uh, as you can see, we had around 75.6%, at least uh, one grade level, level below uh, and 20% two grade levels below. But again, we're seeing great trends. Mr. Powder, next slide. Uh, you can see that that number is down to 50% and around 12%. Our blue is growing. We expected this we knew based on what we were hearing from the research that math was going to be a bit further behind than ELA. We knew this coming in. Um, but again, super proud to see that we're moving kids. So Ms. Proud, next slide. Uh, we are trending in the right direction everywhere. Um, we're, we're increasing the number of kids that are hitting that grade level band um, while decreasing the number of kids in the one, two or three grades below. What's that mean number wise? 84% or I'm sorry, 84 students um, have moved to a grade level band in iReady, which is amazing. Um, despite, again, despite all of the COVID stuff, we're still moving 84 kids like that. Mainly that's in numbers and operations. So, you know, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, fractions, um, number sense, all those things are what most kids are working on right now in iReady. So I wanted to share that. And then lastly, uh, my last slide, I believe, I hope, I've talked a lot. Um, our next steps, the shift, the shift in focus during our PLC meetings is going to go to the data. We have the data now. We have comparative data, which is huge because we haven't had that in a while. Um, so we're going to have staff start to shift their focus to really look at that iReady data um, and start making some instructional decisions based on that. Uh, now that we have some tech in the buildings, I it was like Christmas for me. And if it was Christmas for me, it was definitely Christmas for the staff. Um, we're going to make sure the kids in fourth and fifth are one to one. They'll have a device in the classroom. I think that's going to really help with those hybrid situations, especially um, because everybody can be on the same uh, device or the same presentation at the same time. That's going to really help the teachers, I believe. Um, and then also we're going to have pods. Each pod up top is going to have its own 25 student or 25 Chromebook cart uh, with touchscreen Chromebooks for the littles because they they try to touch the screen anyway. So we're like, let's just get them touchscreen ones. Um, those will be cleaned off 
after every class uses them, using the protocols that we have in place, uh, we're, we're going to make sure we clean them after each use. So I just want to make sure I said that out loud for everyone to hear. All right. Um, during that time, kids could be on a computer. Teachers are pulling those individual and small groups, uh, working on interventions to keep get, keep those numbers moving. All right. Uh, and then lastly, we're also going to continue our reading contest. And after this one is finished, there's another one starting up. And my big push for any family that I speak with and, and everybody who's watching right now is 15 minutes of reading a day solid for each kid will get us to where we want to get. Like, let's just start there. If we can get every kid reading for 15 minutes solid every day, we're going to be all right. Um, we'll start there and then we can go from there. We'll add interventions. We'll add a little bit more reading, uh, but that's where it starts every day in school at home, 15 minutes. And, and the research is showing that just that 15 minutes could lead to great gains for our kids. So um, I'm going to keep pushing that. And I believe that's all I have for you. Yes. <laughs> so I want to uh, recognize and acknowledge uh, Mr. Tercio's presentation. Um, the board, I know I've been talking about this stuff. I know I've been promising this stuff, and I'm very proud to be able to deliver this stuff. Uh, Mr. Tercio, you and your team, and you appropriately acknowledge your faculty because we cannot do it without them. And I'm really pleased that the coincidental nature of us um, honoring the aides tonight because um, – we would not have been able to pull off um, an in-person learning option, even though it's virtual, without all, each and every one of those staff members. And our 250 elementary school students are the benefit and the beneficiary of being able to come to school every single day. So, um, I, you know, the board knows where I stand. It's all about our staff. We can't do it without them. And But it's wonderful to see the growth. Um, we were not surprised, as Mr. Tercio said, um, and this isn't a mechanical issue. You know, we, in education, we, it was basically, we had to determine, okay, what's this hangover or, or the lack of a, uh, you know, a spring traditional school year and then the, the typical summer regression, and we knew where we were, but it's been a, a tremendous effort, uh, targeted growth with specific action plans, and you're seeing the results and the results will continue. So Mr. Tercio, congratulations to you and your team. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Um, Mr. Tercio, congratulations, great job. Congrats to all of our elementary school Red Raiders of the Month and our aides. Thank you so much um, from all of us. So without further ado, our sixth grade Red Raider of the Month is Mr. Ethan Valu. As a sixth grade team, it was our pleasure to nominate Ethan for December Red Raider of the Month. Ethan is a thoughtful, compassionate, and energetic student who is always eager to engage in the lesson or activity for the day. In class, he is never afraid to ask questions to better his learning. He, was, he is also willing to lend a helping hand to his peers and teachers when they need assistance, especially with his savvy technology skills. It is always a delight to hear the stories he tells in relation to the content we are learning. Ethan knows the meaning of effort, responsibility, and integrity, which will take him far in life. Congratulations, Ethan, for a job well done. Our seventh grade Red Raider of the Month is Mr. Cody Edwards. Cody exhibits a high level of maturity for a seventh grade student. Cody works hard in the classroom and is engaging with his peers and his teachers. Cody exhibits many of the positivity project traits that we celebrate, mechanic, that we celebrate mechanical city schools. Cody has exhibited self-control, thriving in both the hybrid and full virtual instructional model. Cody has put this school year into perspective and makes the most of it while having fun. Most importantly, Cody is the kind to each member of our classroom community. We couldn't ask for a better student than Cody Edwards this school year. Congratulations, Cody. <clears throat> our eighth grade Red Raider of the Month is Ms. Daniela Diffenbach. On behalf of the eighth grade team, we would like to formally congratulate Daniela on being selected as our Red Raider of the Month. With all the trials and tribulations of COVID-19 pandemic, Daniela has consistently proven to be a positive role model in class and one of the bright spots of our day. She always shows initiative and ready, readily volunteers to participate in virtual instruction discussions. Her positivity is reflected in the fact that she always be begins class with a hello and ends class with wishing me a good rest of my day. Daniela consistently makes virtual instruction enjoyable and her valuable insight and bright personality. Congrats on being our Red Raider of the Month. Our ninth grade Red Raider of the Month is Miss Maddie Collins. I, for Miss Larkin, I only just met Maddie in early December 2020. Within our few, first few interactions, I could tell what a great student and person she is. Maddie is very diligent in her work and truly strives to be better every single day. 
She is a very kind and loves to make people laugh. I look forward to our meets and she always greets me with a smile. She is a student who shows many of our P2 traits. She is kind, compassionate, and shows a great deal of perseverance and grit. Maddie is an all-around all-star. Keep up the great work, Maddie. It's an absolute my it's absolutely my pleasure to work alongside with you this year. I am so proud of you and all of your hard work. Love, Miss Larkin. Tenth grade, Mr. Jeffrey Vautran. The tenth grade teacher's right. Jeff has a charismatic and caring personality. He is an excellent artist and able to talk to anyone in a friendly and kind way. What we appreciate the most about Jeff is his ability to keep pushing, even when he may not want to at times. Although school may not, although school may not be Jeff's most favorite activity, he has truly made a positive change these last few months into the student who exemplifies the trait of a Red Raider. Keep up the great work, Jeff. Our 11th grade Red Raider of the Month is Ms. Alexis Senegal. Ms. Syverton writes, I nominated Alexis Senegal as Red Raider of the Month for a few reasons. First, it's no secret that virtual learning is difficult for all of us. During this uncertain time, one thing has been consistent and that is Alexis' presence in, in class every morning. She joins class early each day, always turns our camera on, engages us with her sweet smile, volunteers to answer questions often, and most importantly, laughs at my jokes. Ale Alexis has managed to stay on top of her work, maintaining a 90 average in English for quarter two, an accomplishment to, be, to commend, especially during these challenging times for our students. I am so proud of the effort and engagement Alexis has shown. Great job, Alexis. Love, Miss Cyberling. Miss Cyberling's co-teacher, Miss Brownell, added, "I have been lucky to have taught Alexis for the past two years. She is a hard worker and honest to a fault. She excels in English and contributes to classroom discussions. Alexis is insightful and makes teaching enjoyable. Congratulations, Alexis." Lastly, our Senior Red Raider of the Month is Mr. Harold Bell. Mr. Daly writes, "There are certain characteristics successful people share." purpose, enthusiasm, self-control, and creativity. While each of our Red Raiders of the Month manifest these qualities in different ways, there is another attribute that in the age of COVID, our most successful Raiders must possess, and that's perseverance. Harold Bell has approached his senior year with the resilience of a champion boxer who, after falling behind on points, charges into the final round and scores a knockout. At a time when the world gives us every excuse to throw our hands up and quit, Harold's chosen to, to, to more difficult, the more difficult path. He has chosen to persevere. After a difficult start to an especially difficult year, he has taken responsibility for himself and focused, or rather refocused squarely on his education. I've had the good fortune to teach at Mechanical Junior, junior Senior High School for nearly half my life. In that time, I've come to know many of the most engaging young people our school has produced. I count Harold Bell among them. He is thoughtful, and intuitive. He is compassionate and kind. I have never known him to be dishonest, and he does not quit. To the point, Harold Bell represents that which is best about our community. Congratulations, Harold. Going above and beyond, again, um, I would like to, to honor our aides and, and to reiterate what Mr. Potter said, um, having an in-person virtual hybrid learning would be impossible without these amazing people. So first, I'd like to highlight Ms. Tammy Lesko. Ms. Tammy Lesko does an amazing job supporting all of our students in room 717. Working, working closely with Ms. Hulse, she uses her strong relationship with the students to positively promote a supportive academic environment. Her love and passion is displayed on a daily basis and is, and is exemplified by her true team player attitude, willing to do whatever it takes to, to improve the culture of our school district. Whether it's supporting an individual student throughout the day or filling in when needed in the main office, she is an incredible asset to the Mechanical City School District. Thank you, Ms. Lesko. Next, I have Ms. Roberta Madison. Ms. Madison is an aide that serves as a one-on-one -on -one for a sixth grade student. She goes above and, above, above and beyond to support her student throughout the entire school day. Her dedication to go above and beyond to support and help her student, grows, uh, help her student grow is inspiring to witness. Thank you, Ms. Madison. Next, Ms. Trish Ubrick. Ms. Ubrick serves as a one-to-one -one aide for a visually impaired student. Ms. Ubrick constantly supports her student and all, and all the students in room 717. What I admire most about her is her whatever it takes attitude. For example, last year her student received a positive referral and she quickly used the Braille machine to personalize and make that moment special to her student. 
Our students are incredibly lucky to have her in their lives. Thank you, Ms. Hubert. Next, Ms. Jennifer Tepitro. She's new to the junior senior high school this year, and she wears several hats and does an amazing job with all the tasks she's asked to do. Most recently, she's been tasked to support our fifth grade learners in the cafeteria. Behind her mask with a huge smile on her face, she constantly demonstrates a kid's first attitude. Since day one, she's made sure all of our students get the support they need. We are very lucky to have her in our school district, and she is a huge advocate for all of our students. Thank you, Mr. Petro. Next, Ms. Priscilla Holland. Ms. Holland is an aide in the junior senior high school. Since September, Priscilla has been incredibly flexible, willing to do whatever is asked. There is not enough room on this page to describe all the roles, jobs, and responsibilities. She is welcomed always with a smile on her face. Priscilla comes to school every day knowing her role may be different from the day before, but is always, always up for the challenge. Thank you, Mrs. Holland. Next is Ms. Sue Hickey. Ms. Hickey is a one-to-one -one aide in room 717. She is not only responsible for supporting your student, but she always goes above and beyond supporting Ms. Hulse and the entire student, all the students in the classroom. Sue's years of experience is an invaluable asset in, into the success of all the students she comes in contact with. What I appreciate most about Ms. Hickey is her solution-focused feedback that always best supports our students. Thank you, Ms. Hickey. Next, we have Ms. Larissa Fiacco. Ms. Fiacco is an aide. She also has numerous responsibilities. Not only does Ms. Fiaco work very closely with some of our high school students, she's also taking on the responsibility as a sixth grade classroom co-facilitator with one of our other teachers. As you can see from her picture, she is always happy to do whatever is needed to engage and support our Red Raider students. Thank you so much, Ms. Fiaco. Ms. Christy Dion. Ms. Dion is an aide that supports um, in numerous capacities. Her most important role as a one-on-one -on -one aide is with one of our virtual students. Christy is essential in providing support to the student, making sure he has everything necessary to be successful. This year, Christy has always demonstrated strong teamwork and helping in numerous ways to get through these challenging times. Christy's student first mindset is always appreciated and is a value, valuable asset to our school district. Thank you so much, Ms. Dion. Ms. Jenny Arsenault is an aide in the high school. Again, this year we've asked um, Jenny to do a lot um, and, and a lot of different responsibilities. She's been instrumental in providing coverage to numerous classes in our school, bin, school building, whether it's covering a study hall, supporting an elementary class, or facilitating iReady in the computer lab, Ginny does whatever it takes. Thank you for your flexibility and willingness to always support our students regardless of what grade. Thank you, Ms. Arsenal. So before I start with culture, I want to share with the board that um, as Mr. Tercio provided academic achievement, I will be providing that next month because our iReady cycle, we have our second diagnosis scheduled for the next couple of weeks in the junior senior high school. So um, tonight you'll see our culture slide. Next month I'll have a thorough presentation on the student achievement and, and data to, to provide to the Board of Education. So the, the last two months, P2, again, we've had bulletin boards reinforcing the character traits similar to the elementary school with self-control, optimism, prudence, perseverance, and integrity. Um, we issued 218 positive referrals to 152 students. Again, we do Red Radio of the Month, recognition of our staff. We, we had a P2 PSA contest that we'll be announcing the winners um, in the next few days. Um, the students were tasked in a, in a challenge to do, you know, a, a song, um, a video, a poem, an essay uh, about a P2 trait that exemplifies them as a Red Raider. Um, weekly videos by myself to keep the community, our, our parents and our students informed of what's coming up. Um, and, and recently we've added PPS and our counseling staff into weekly grade level meetings to develop specific action plans for our students of concern. Um, again, we've, we've really um, tweaked some of our practices to best support our kids and we've learned over the first semester that we need to, we need to do things in different ways to, 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 to best support our kids. So I'm really proud of all of our staff. As Chris said, um, you know, given the circumstances, we're doing an amazing job and, and just the never quit attitude, I, I can't thank them enough. So um, this is, I'm excited for this. And to our Board of Education members and to our staff and to the people watching, um, yesterday was a special day here at Mechanicville uh, City School District. Um, quite frankly, this may be one of my proudest moments as the principal of Mechanicville Junior Senior High School up to date. Words cannot express how proud I am of Alyssa Christensen. 
I first met Alyssa in September of 2019, and it was abundantly clear she had an incredible passion. She was incredibly passionate and motivated young lady. Alyssa was always very transparent in that she had goals of graduating a semester early. Through the help of many and countless staff members here at the junior senior high school, we supported her in prioritizing what, which was what was most important. I'm excited to say that she clearly prioritized their goals and officially is a graduate of the Mechanicville City School District. Alyssa, I speak for our entire school district, our Board of Education, Superintendent Potter, and everyone in our school community. We are beyond proud of you and wish nothing but success as you enter the next chapter of the life. We are always here for you and cannot wait to witness your future success. I personally want to thank you for always challenging me to be a better principal. Love, Mr. Mitchell and the entire Mechanicville City School District. Congratulations. Our next, rec our next recognition is also very special. Um, I've had the opportunity to have um, a couple Tenure recommendations. Um, tonight, I am extremely proud to recommend Mr. Jonathan Villa for tenure. In my short time here as principal, Mr. Villa has always demonstrated a whatever it takes attitude to support our students. His strength in building strong relationships with all of our students, and he is viewed as a trusted adult for many of our Red Raiders. In addition to his teaching duties, Mr. Villa coaches multiple sports, and he's always very visible at all of our school events supporting all of our Red Raiders. Congratulations, Mr. Villa. Thank you very much, Mr. Mitchell. And I wanna echo what I said to uh, Mr. Tercio. I could not be prouder of you and your staff. Um, having a January graduate under normal circumstances is a tremendous accomplishment by any young person. But for Alyssa to accomplish what she did with the help and support of a dedicated faculty, a semester early during a worldwide pandemic, when quite frankly, everyone, every one of us is struggling for any form of normalcy and a normal routine. For this young lady to buckle down, do the necessary work and to meet all the requirements and to receive all the rights and privileges that come with a Mechanicville City School District diploma Quite frankly, her accomplishment is simply amazing. And I'm equally proud of Mr. Villa. I take tenure incredibly serious. It's a multi-million dollar uh, commitment when you look at a 30 to 35 year educational career that a school district makes to an employee. So I echo everything Mr. Mitchell said. Later in the board meeting, as part of the board action items, I will be asking the board to officially approve his tenure, but I could not be prouder of him. He's an outstanding young educator who, quite frankly, is the epitome of a trusted adult and influences lives daily. Before I get into the formal report, which will be a summary of the coffee chat, given um, the conversations we're having, the recognitions, and the fact that everyone is struggling with this pandemic. I wanted to provide the board and our community with some perspective. And you only have perspective when you can compare it to something else. And quite frankly, I'm gonna be very bold. Um, I'm not concerned with what any other school district is doing. I'm only concerned what we do here in Mechanicville because that's all that matters. It's not a contest, it's not a race, but we will always do our best to meet every single school community member where they are at in an equitable manner because it's not always having everybody needing the same it's about providing them with the support they need to be successful a faculty member shared with me today an email exchange that they had with their child's school hello my daughter was put on mandatory quarantine through the ninth due to an exposure in your building what is the instructional plan for students on mandatory quarantine class meeting links virtual resources office hours or the like for direct instruction and or support we finally got her back to somewhat on track and would hate to see her drop back due to a lack of engagement or inability to participate in lessons 
to keep up. She has individual virtual classes from one or two teachers that was she was invited to as a one-time thing for a lab or the like, but nothing daily for instruction. So other than checking the system for quote unquote work, what's the plan? Feel free to write me back or call anytime. Thank you. I'm sorry that your daughter had to be quarantined. These are crazy times. When students are placed on mandatory quarantine, excuse me, we look at the length of time the students will be out. Your daughter will miss three direct instructional days counting yesterday. I know she had to leave early. Teachers post assignments, class notes, and additional links. Kids are expected to keep up and attempt the work. All kids can contact their teachers via our system, message, email, and often teachers will make some time for a short one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. I realize this is not ideal. Our teachers do not live stream from the classroom, meaning teaching virtually and in person at the same time. Also, some teachers teach virtual and some don't. So flipping a schedule isn't the easiest to do for all virtual students for a short period of time. I know some teachers have informally sent links to their students to join a, a virtual class here and there during mandatory quarantine. Please encourage this, but it's not mandatory. I wish it were. It would make life easier. Please let me know if she needs anything and I will try my best to get it. Have a good day. Those people don't work at the Mechanical City School District. Our faculty and staff go above and beyond every single day. That's why we're recognizing these folks. It's not an exercise in futility. Literally, our team is reinventing themselves each and every day, meeting their students where they are at. I hear this relentlessly from our peers who have children in other districts. Our team continues to go above and beyond every single day under the worst of circumstances. So I just want the board to know and understand the yeoman's work that is being done by all of your employees. So I'll get to my report. So I want to summarize last night's coffee chat. Uh, we presented our return to school plan. Um, and it began with a meeting that Jody and I hosted and Kevin Kulikowski participated in. We had all three of our operations directors. We had the executive team members of the Mechanical Teachers Association and our CSEA participate. We thoroughly reviewed our opening plan of the school year. We made a couple tweaks and I'm proud to share with you what our plan will be to return. So school will return to in-person and hybrid instruction following the February break. But in order to do this, on Monday, February 22nd, all students, grades K through 12, will learn virtually at home in a live format following the instruction of their teacher. And we're going back to the original schedule. K3 instruction will be eight to one, four six is nine to two, and seven twelve is 10 to three. And when we return, we will remain with this schedule and have three bus runs as we did before. The reason we're having a virtual day on the 22nd is the district is hosting a COVID-19 rapid testing clinic for all employees on that day. Adirondack Health and Wellness will test every employee with the following exceptions that were developed by Dr. Carl Scambatti. Employees who've had COVID-19 will not participate in the clinic because there's too great a likelihood of a false positive, and that would not inform us of what we're trying to get to. Employees having both vaccine shots will not participate in the clinic. And lastly, employees demonstrating any COVID-19 symptoms and not able to pass the screener that we fill out every day will isolate at home and follow up their physician and not participate in the clinic. Pending a successful testing clinic, all in-person and hybrid learning begins on Tuesday February 23rd. K-6 
and special class exceptional learners. We have one in each building, middle school and high school. We'll return to in-person learning daily, every single day. Students, grades seven through 12, will return to a hybrid model, our red and white students. Red students will be in person on Monday and Thursday. White students will be in person on Tuesday and Friday. Our plan as of right now is to continue our virtual Wednesday model, personalizing learning for each student. The full day schedule remains as it currently is. We are doing the testing clinic and all of these adjustments because it's the, met the only metric that matters to us is our ability to have a full complement of healthy staff to educate and support our students. I know we've talked about it. I know the board is aware. We've highlighted all the people that are helping. But literally, at the K-6 level, it takes twice as many staff. As an example, there's 20 students in a first grade class. They are separated into two rooms, 10 in each. It's not just one teacher. You need, you need two adults. So when we deal with staff members who test positive, when we deal with situations where people have to mandatory quarantine because a family member has tested positive, this really is a strain on our capacity to be in person. So that's why we are having the testing clinic so that we are assured we have a healthy team ready to go and support all of our Red Raiders. So our next steps, we will be sending an electronic registration form to all families to decide if their student will be returning for in-person and hybrid learning after the February break. There's no more requirement testing for students. The zones never were put into place. So we were prepared. We followed all the guidance that came from New York State because they talked about orange, or excuse me, yellow, orange, and red zones at three, four, and 5%. Well, as you are all aware, we quickly went from 3% to the height of the, um, Spike in Saratoga County, we, we were at 11% at one point. The zones were never put into place. So there's no requirement for a parent to sign a consent, but it is the end of the semester. And we did ask for a commitment from families to make that decision. So with our new re-entry plan, we are sending out a re-registration and we're hoping we get as many uh, folks that feel confident to send their children for in-person learning because I know their teachers can't wait to see them. So because Mr. Pratt will need the necessary information to create bus runs and faculty will be aware if their students are in person or virtual, we will be asking that the form be completed by next Friday, February 12th. So as of presenting this last night, it was distributed through Parent Square and posted on our website today. We believe a week and a day is, is a good amount of time for people to really give a thoughtful um, reflection on having their children return to school. Uh, Mr. Mitchell will be sending surveys to students and parents asking for feedback about Wednesdays and how they've been going, because quite honestly, it's about everyone's voice. Uh, we've, we've received excellent feedback from the faculty. We need to hear from the students and their parents. Mr. Because Potter, go, right ahead, go right ahead, Mr. Mitchell. That survey was sent out this morning. Thank you so much. Because quite honestly, we are implementing a, a process of continuous improvement. We will never be satisfied with our performance because we can always do better. So as much as the faculty are thrilled with the in, in, uh, additional engagement, um, students who are re-engaged, they may have been struggling. We've had parent-teacher conferences on these Wednesdays. Um, they've differentiated the instruction to meet kids where they're at. We want to make sure the students and parents voice is represented as well because we want to continue to improve what we're doing. We will be sending a form, form home and I believe in my home today um, with our current in-person learners at the elementary school asking parents if their students need a device for our full virtual day on Monday, February 22nd. Any student needing a device will bring a Chromebook home on Friday, February 12th. We are purchasing masks for all students and staff from Val Sporting Goods. And this is a mock-up of the mask, our M logo with the hashtag one Mechanicville. And I can't wait to hand these out to every student that walks through the door on the 23rd. 
So the next piece that I'd like to update the board on that I presented on last night, the coffee chat, is high-risk winter sports. So as you are all aware, on January 22nd, the governor um, a lot made the announcement that he was allowing high-risk sports to um, start up effective February 1st with local Department of Health approval. Uh, this past Friday, January 29th, the Saratoga County Board of Supervisors held a, um, a press conference where they approved the start of um, high-risk sports with multiple um, requirements at the local level, also with the threshold of the seven-day uh, positivity rolling average being below the 4%. I'm very happy to say that today's was at 3.5. I will be asking the board to approve a resolution, but part of the requirement was Dr. Carl Scambatti, district physician, needed to approve my readiness, prepare, prepared readiness to return plan for each specific sport. And Dr. Scambatti approved them for boys and girls basketball, cheerleading, and wrestling. Our athletic director, Tom Berrigan, has been developing protocols and systems required as directed by the Saratoga Board of Supervisors and the Department of Public Health. He's working closely with coaches of each individual team. He's creating equitable practice times for all teams. And due to space limitations, Stillwater will be hosting Red Warrior Wrestling practices. He's aligning every single protocol to match those approved by Dr. Scambatti. So there is a formal proposal for an eight school compri league comprised of Saratoga County Schools. This proposal is not finalized. There will be a vote tomorrow, but I've been in contact with every superintendent and I'm expecting this to be finalized. Um, their draft schedules for basketball have been created for JV and varsity. Mechanicville is committed to creating intramural programs for boys and girls basketball at the modified level. And if there are schools within this eight team league who, um, who are also going to have a modified team, we'd be willing to schedule competitive contests um, if time, space, and everything permits. Um, we do not have any formal information from any of the other le uh, school participating leagues at this point, but we are committed to creating this opportunity internally as an intramural program, even if it's just us practicing and playing uh, uh, amongst and against our, each other. Because, you know, we spoke last night and I will speak for Mr. Mitchell, we are committed to creating not just sports, but all extracurricular club and uh, musical and other types of opportunities for our kids. So as of today, only three schools have approved wrestling, two of which are merged, which is Mechanicville and Stillwater. So um, I actually spoke to Coach Berrigan before I logged on um, and the third school uh, voted today that they're not going to participate. So when it comes to wrestling, uh, right now it's just Mechanicville and Stillwater. So we will work with Stillwater. We will contact our parents and we'll be in contact with our athletes to see where they're at. But the league would consist of, um, oops, sorry, I had a, one of the schools cut off. It's Corinth, Galway, Mechanicville, Saratoga Catholic, Schuylerville, South and Falls, Stillwater, and uh, Waterford Half Moon. So whether we participated in the Wasserman League or this new eight-team Saratoga County League, the difficult decision was made only to allow game personnel and team members into each sporting event. As this is very disappointing for families and fans, each school district has made the commitment to live stream all games and contests. This eliminates nearly 100 additional adults from entering the, each school gymnasium whereby contact tracing, spacing, and supervision of people on the very strict requirements put forth in documents by the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, as well as Saratoga County Department of Health and Dr. Scambatti. Lastly, because each school will be live streaming games, now friends, relatives, and student peers will be able to watch our student athletes compete. Given the circumstances, we think this is an excellent alternative. So at this point, I, I will gladly answer any questions from the board on my presentation. Um, and if there are none, I will get to actions, but I will gladly answer any questions you might have. Okay. Marlene? Grace, I, don't have any, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to say I loved the presentations of the students and the faculty. 
I love the data that Mr. Tercio provided. Um, I'm all about data, so I love that. And I think our plan going forward of reopening and having kids come to school is very important. I, I know that many students want to be in person that haven't been able to be in person, so I think this is a good step forward. Bruce, I have a question. Go ahead, Coach. Um, you, know, you may have said this, and I misunderstood it, so please correct me. On February 23rd, when we go back after break, uh, K through six, will they be going eight to one o'clock or regular back to when we used to have it? No, Coach. We have to we have to keep our three bus run schedule because of the COVID safety restrictions. We're only allowed so many kids on a bus at a time, so yes. it will remain eight to one, nine to two, and ten to three. Okay. Another question, if you don't mind. Uh, when the kids go, when we go back after February on February twenty third, the kids that will be doing remote from home, they'll be tapping right into that classroom where all the kids are. Is that how that works? So what Mr. Tercio has created and the, and I, cause there's two different stories. So if the families choose virtual at the elementary level, Mr. Tercio has created virtual only classrooms for each grade level. Yeah. That's so right. they have their own class. At the junior senior high school, right. on the hybrid model or full virtual, because it's hybrid, cool. the teachers are, and this is quite honestly, the exact opposite of the story I shared of one of our faculty members. Our teachers right. are teaching the 10 seventh graders in front of them and the 10 at home. So that's why it's called a hybrid model. So if any one of those students are a full-time virtual, they're just getting the live streaming every single day. So that's how we construct our in-person, hybrid, and full virtual. And lastly, I just wanted to thank uh, Vals and uh, Josh. You had explained to us we got a good deal. They were able to give us uh, for affordable masks for all our kids, and, and I thank them for that. I'm sure the board does. Thank you. Okay. okay. Hey, Mr. So, Mr. Potter, yes, sir. I'd like to say just a few things, okay? You got it, Mr. Rauchy. Number one, um, you know, AAA plus job by you, uh, Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Kolakowski, um, Tercio. I mean, all the teachers, I mean, you guys are doing beyond an excellent job of, you know, taking care of our student learners um, in, in these unprecedented times. And what I want to say is in this crazy political climate we're in, we have to, I mean, I'm very concerned with the, you know, you know, students for learning and the student athletes for their mental well-being. Um, I'm telling you, because I'm obviously know, you know, lots of people and a lot of people, as you know, and I'm not trying to reiterate what you're already saying, are, are very struggling very bad. So, I mean, everything that you can do to continue the excellent work. And I mean, we, we still got a road to hoe here. Um, I mean, it's going to be, a, you know, definitely going to take a, you know, Herculean effort on everybody in the community to really continue to rally together to support our uh, kids and student learners and student athletes, because it's, you know, this has uh, done definitely some some damage here with uh, what these kids have went through in the past uh, year. So I just want to say, you know, excellent job. But obviously, we're going to have to continue to evolve and as you, you know, keep uh, learning new things that better support our, our students and student athletes. So I just want to say thank you. So first of all, thank you so much. Um, all the positive comments are incredibly meaningful and personal to me. But I want you to also know it's very meaningful to all the administrators and our staff. So thank you very much for the kind words. Um, I, I said it before. But to Mr. Rauchy's point, we implement processes of continuous improvement. We constantly plan, implement, and monitor. Uh, there's a process known as the die cycle, where you, where you diagnose, you implement, or and you inter, you excuse me, diagnose, intervene, implement, and then evaluate, and it continues because you're not going to hit the ball out of the park on the first pitch every time. So we're constantly analyzing every single thing we do. That's why you're seeing the results that Mr. Tercio was talking about. That's why you're seeing the positive results that Mr. Mitchell talks about.
But the fact of the matter is, even though we've done all these things and we're very proud, that's why we've evolved with our Wednesday program at the junior senior high school. Mr. Rauchi is absolutely right. We need to meet, and this is what I'm talking about in an equitable manner and what equity means. We need to meet every student where they're at because everybody has a different story. Believe it or not, some of our Red Raiders are really thriving in a full virtual environment. They are not the majority at all, but they are out there. And we are doing our very, very best, continually looking at our practices. The faculty are reinventing themselves on a daily basis. Um, I'm so proud of my administrative team because they're constantly researching evidence-based best practices in real time. And I think it's been demonstrated and I'm not here to brag, but I think the proof is in the pudding because Mechanicville is constantly being sought out for how we are doing things. And we're getting a variety of recognition and I'm, I couldn't be prouder. I could not be prouder. So thank you very much. I, I'm grateful for your comments, but I, you need to know we are not stopping. We are never going to give up and we're going to continue to fight and do better because that's our kids deserve it. Our community deserves it. And one mechanic will deserve it. So items for information. February 15th through the 19th is our winter recess. So there's no school K-12. As we've already announced our reopening plan, uh, March 23rd will be my next community coffee chat at 6 p.m. That will still be virtual. March 4th will be our next regular scheduled Board of Education meeting at 6.30. Um, we will reevaluate if that should be virtual or in person, see where we're at as a community and the positivity rate and everything else. Our communicable disease plan on September 7th, 2020, Governor Cuomo signed legislation requiring all public employers, including school districts, to create plans to protect workers in the event of another state of disaster emergency involving a communicable disease such as COVID-19. This plan should be included as an attachment to our district-wide safety plan. This plan was previously shared with the union leadership and will be posted on the district website for their 30-day public comment period. So, committee updates. Um, if Mrs. Birch doesn't mind, I'll just keep rolling. The Audit Finance Committee met at 5.30 on February 1st. The committee reviewed the preliminary budgets for the following functional areas, Board of Education, District Clerk, Chief School Administrator, Business Administration, Auditing, Treasurer, Tax Collection, and Legal. The committee also reviewed the governor's proposed state aid budget for 21-22. And as the board is aware, and I'd like to you know, share with the community, we are now heading into full budget planning mode. So as we have each board meeting moving forward, there will be more and more um, information shared and then future opportunities for community uh, comment and input. So items requiring board action. I recommend the Board of Education approve the meeting minutes of January 7th, 2021. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Coleman, second. Second. Mr. O'Connor, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the financial items in A through G listed below. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Taglione, second. Mr. Bove, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the Committee on Special Education Report. Motion. Have a motion. Mr. Taglione, second. Second. Mr. Coleman, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education waive the second reading and adopt the revised policy number 3420, non-discrimination and anti-harassment in the district. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Bove, second. Mr. Coleman, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the disposal or sale of the damaged or obsolete items as listed, or excuse me, as outlined below. 
May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Mr. O'Connor, second. Mr. Taglione, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the following high risk sports as listed in items A through C below. May I have a motion? Rouchy. Mr. Rouchy, second. 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 Oh, whatever. Mr. O Mr. O'Connor, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 90% aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education rescind the appointment of Sydney Leonard as Central Treasurer for the Junior Senior High School Extra Class Fund and Student Activity Fund effective February 4th, 2021. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Kugli, <laughs> second. Mr. Coleman, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education rescind the January 7th appointment of Haley Fisher as food service helper effective January 8th per CSEA contract. Uh, when we followed up uh, uh, notifying this candidate that they uh, were board approved after a full interview in the entire thing, um, we were informed that they were moving on to a, a different opportunity. So I just wanted to clarify for the board. May I have a motion? Motion. Yeah. Mr. Bold. Second, Mr. Buglasey. Discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education accept the resignation of Margaret Giller as CIO, effective February 7th, 2021, per the employee agreement between Ms. Giller and the district. And I'd like to explain, we accepted, uh, we were notified that she was leaving her position in a full-time capacity in November, but she had agreed to stay on in a per diem basis to get us until we had a replacement. So I'm grateful for that. Um, she really helped us out in a bind, but this is the, the official resignation, um, even though she hasn't been here in person since November. May I have a motion? Motion. motion. Mr. O'Connor, second. Mr. Rauchy, discussion? All in favor? No. Opposed? carried. This next one is a part of um, the um, some of the recommendations that have come from the CSE um, and what um, I presented at the previous board meeting. Um, I recommend the Board of Education accept the resignation of Jessica Harris as impact coach effective January 11th. Um, I, we do not have the MOA com completed, but Ms. Harris will be taking on a CSE chairperson responsibility that I described um, in the restructure at the last board meeting. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. O'Connor, second. Second. Mr. Taglion, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And this is part of the restructure. Um, we will have a, a coach at each level, uh, separate buildings. So I recommend the Board of Education appoint the following impact coaches as outlined in A and B below. May I have a motion? Motion. motion. Mr. Rauchy, second Mr. Coleman. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And as I explained to the board in separate communication, um, I recommend the Board of Education approve the contract between Special Education Consultant Colleen Yulrich and the district effective February 8th. Ms. Yulrich will be partnering with Dr. LeVay. Um, currently, Dr. LeVay is on a leave of absence with us, and um, there's no uh, budgetary impact. Um, they will be a team. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Coleman, second. Second. Mr. O'Connor, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the following coaches for the 2020-21 winter season as per the recommendation of Athletic Director Tom Berrigan, contingent on the mandated certifications and clearances, completed and up-to-date and appropriate number of student athletes to comprise a team as listed below. May I have a motion? Rouch. Mr. Rauchy, second. Second. Mr. Taglione, discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the probationary for appointment of Kristen Schillinger as a three hour food service helper at a rate of $12.50 an hour, effective February 5th, 2021, per CSEA contract. I have a motion. Motion. Mr. O'Connor, second, Mr. Puglisi. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the provisional probationary appointment of Brianna Bowen as a senior typist effective February 5th, 2021 at an hourly rate of $16.68 as per the terms and agreement between Ms. Bowen and the district. This position is provisional pending civil service examination. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Coleman, second Mr. Rauchy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education appoint Brianna Bowen as central treasurer for the Junior Senior High School Extra Class Fund and Student Activity Fund at a prorated stipend of $1,000, effective February 5th, 2021. May I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Taglione, second Mr. O'Connor. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the provisional appointment of Sydney Leonard as Administrative Secretary, effective January 15th, 2021, at a prorated salary of $40,775 for the 2020-2021 school year, as per the terms and agreement between Ms. Leonard and the district. This position is provisional, pending civil service examination. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Mr. Puglisi, second Mr. O'Connor. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I'm very proud to recommend to the Board of Education appoint Jonathan Villa, tenure in the area of social studies, effective February 12th, 2021, for MTA contract and the recommendation of junior senior high school principal, Michael Mitchell. Motion. May I have a motion? motion. Mr. Rachi, second Mr. Taglion. Discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Congratulations, Mr. Villa. Yeah, congratulations, Mr. Villa. Awesome. He looked like one of Mitch's students, though, in that photo. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend the Board of Education approve the following substitutes as listed in items A and B. May I have a motion? Motion. motion. Mr. O'Connor, second. Mr. Rauchy, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Public emails. So let me check here. We do not have any emails to the Board of Ed site. Okay. No. Motion to adjourn? Motion. Mr. Bo, second. Mr. Yeah. Rashi, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Johnny's awake. Thank you very Bye much, everyone. everyone. I hope Thank you have a great you. evening. That report. Uh, let me see how to get out of this.